Hi folks, how do we use Fusion 360 Cam to 3D machine this angle on our part? Let's walk through some tips, tricks on how to get this done and how to get it done with really good surface finishes. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So this is a fan of the channel, sent this in. Honestly, great job. They've got an adaptive tool path that's going to use a flat end mill to rough out the majority of this angle, leaving us with this sort of stair-stepped pattern roughed out. And then we'll move over to a parallel tool path with a ball nose end mill. It's gonna move back and forth as it moves all three axes of the machine to go up and machine or surface that angle. So tip number one, all tools deflect. So the more consistent I can make this stair stepped adaptive surface, the more consistent the tool pressure or the deflection is going to be when I come through and I do this surfacing operation. This stair step gets rid of a lot of the material, but it also presents a really inconsistent amount of material and thus deflection or tool pressure as it comes through and surfaces it. We can do that in the 3D adaptive by going to edit, passes, fine step down. We'll change it from 40 thousandths of an inch to say 10 thousandths of an inch. Click OK. And now there's less material left, but also there's a more consistent or less drastic changes for when the ball nose anvil comes through and cleans it up. But there's an even better way. Let's duplicate this tool path if you happen to have what I call a bull nose end mill or an end mill with a corner radius. So it's not a ball end mill. There's still a flat area in the section. The one that I like is this guy right here, quarter inch tool with a 60 thou radius. We'll add that in our fusion library. Bull nose, click OK. And what I like about that is instead of using a square shoulder end mill, we're gonna result with even less stair stepping when we're finished with this part. You could also do the roughing with the same ball nose end mill that we're using for our parallel toolpath. The only thing I would exercise caution on is that for us, ball nose end mills tend to be special end mills. We like to keep them in really good condition, really sharp, and we don't stock as many of them. So I like to keep them for just the detail finishing work, not the roughing work or the hogging work. So it's a great example of where having a bull nose end mill can really help you out. Regardless of what tooling you're using, shorten up and choke up on that tool. We wanna to hold it as short as we can. And thicker tools can really help you with both rigidity, but also on this 3D tool path, because we're surfacing, the smaller the tool, the more susceptible we are to the scalloping of it. If we take a look, the smaller the tool, the finer the step over that we have to take, or otherwise we will be subjecting ourselves to what's called the scalloping. So in this parallel tool path, we've got a 25 thousandths of an inch step over. I'll take a quick hop into CAD and see what that looks like. I'm gonna create a new sketch on this face here. And I'm gonna create two circles. We'll dimension them to a quarter inch and let's make them tangent to our line. Now, if we did a 25 thousandths of an inch step over, 0.025, the scallop height is this section right here. So we can actually click that. And we can extrude it across our face. So here you can get a better idea of what that scallop height is going to look like. Of course, it'll be repeated throughout the part, but it's real, you'll be able to notice it. We can combat that two ways. We can reduce the step over, but the problem is that it increases our cam cycle time. It takes longer to make the part. In this case, it goes from one minute and 20 seconds all the way up to six and a half minutes because we've reduced that step over. So the alternative is use a larger tool. We go back to our sketch in CAD, we can see our scallop height at a 25 thousandths step over changes quite a bit if we went up to say a 0.75 inch diameter tool. It's in fact, significantly smaller now. Solid carbide tends to get really expensive in these large diameters, so don't go that way. Here's two options. Number one, this is an absolute 
scream and deal. It's from China, but $27 gets you this 20 millimeter diameter tool with a pack of inserts. The huge downside for us Tormach users is it's not TTS compatible. 20 millimeters is just slightly too large. So we actually picked up one of these up and we've been using it directly in a 20 millimeter uh, R8 call it in the shank of the machine. Not as convenient, but it's a screaming price and it's been working out great so far. The more convenient option is Tormach sells a 25 millimeter, approximately one inch toroidal cutter that works great with our M12 threaded arbor system. Either way, you're going to get the benefits of polish and ground inserts, which means you're going to be able to get better surface finishes with less cycle time. That's a win. One last major tip from the CAD CAM workflow standpoint is take a look at this parallel toolpath. One of the things I don't love about it is it's linking right on and off the part. So you can see it's just starting with the tool barely ever so slightly off. And in fact, it's still doing a linking move as it approaches that part. We'd get a better tool path if the cut started a little bit before the part and went straight all the way across it and then retracted after it was off. The easiest way to do this, and it's a very common workflow for creating CAM tool paths and surfacing, hop into the patch environment. I'm gonna create offset patch. I'm gonna click once on this face, click okay. So what happens, we have this new body here. I'll hide body three, because that's our part. And that leaves me body six, which is that patch I just made. So if you're new to patches, card here to the NYC CNC videos. We've got a number of different tutorials on the patch environment. Really useful uh, environment to do a lot of different things on toolpath containment uh, and controlling how your toolpaths run on your part. Think of patches as a thickless skin. So they have zero thickness. It's not like a solid model. It's just a skin. In this case, the patch is the exact same size as the top of our part. So let's change that. Modify, extend, I'm gonna click this one, first edge, the second edge, drag it out, say 150 thousandths of an inch, click OK. And you can now see that that patch overhangs the left and the right side. Hop back into cam, and on this parallel tool path, I'll change the machining boundary to be selection. We'll pick that, click OK. And close, unfortunately it drops the part all the way down. Let's fix that by going back into the setup geometry model. And the reason we've got to add this is we've got to tell Fusion, hey, in this parallel operation, I want you to obey the patch that I created. And look at that. Now it's gonna do this transition move off each edge of the part, which is great. Three last tips. Under edit, passes, Direction both ways or one way. One way will force it to only do, in this case, climb cutting. That's generally how we get better surface finishes. As you can see, it's gonna cut from the right to the left across the part, lift up, move back, and recut. The downside is it's a longer operation. You'll have to play to see is, the, is it worth it for the better finishes. Number two, I'm always gonna recommend that you have smoothing turned on. Card here to the video we did where we really walk through and explain what is smoothing and why it can help you make better parts. And number three, moving from 2D cam to 3D cam can really feel overwhelming. Good news. Under this 3D tab, adaptive is quite similar to the 2D adaptive. So really, there's only three tool paths that I care about here. Parallel, contour, and scallop. Parallel tends to be great for shallow angles, like the part we're working on today. Contour is better for your steeper sidewalls. And scallop is a little bit of a different piece. Maybe we'll cover that in a different video, but don't worry about this long, lengthy list. You really just need to learn these first two. Hope you folks learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon. <laughs>